ओम नमोलोये सर्वत्र का वर्ती अरियंताणम ओम नमोलोये सर्वत्र का वर्ती सिद्धाणम ओम नमोलोये सर्वत्र का वर्ती आयर्याणम ओम नमोलोये सर्वत्र का वर्ती उवज्जायाणम ओम नमोलोये सर्वत्र का वर्ती सावणम अनंत अनंत भाव बेदती बरेली भले अनंत अनंत नय निक्षेपे व्याख्या निक्षे सकल जगत हित कारिणी हारिणी मोह चारिणी बाबा बे मोक्ष चारिणी प्रमाणी छे उपमा अप्यानी जन तमारा खविते व्यर्थ आपवाती निज मति म पाई मे मानी छे अहो राज चंद्र बाळ ख्याल नथी पामताए जीने स्वर तणी वाणी जाणी तेने जाणी छे गुरु राज तणी वाणी जाणी तेने जाणी छे नमः समय साराय स्वानुभूत्या चका सुते चित स्वभावाय भावाय सर्व भावांतर छिदे अज्ञान ति मेरंदानम ज्ञान अंजन सलाकया चक्षुरन मिलितम येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः ओम नमः शिवेभ्यो ओम नमः शिवेभ्यो ओम श्री सुदात्माने नमः जय जिनेंद्र आम टुडे इज अ मे 18th 2020 मंडे and we are continuing our discussion on uh, Atma Siddhi Sastra. We are talking the stanzas for Atma Siddhi Sastra. We talked about the first stanza and now we'll be starting second stanza today. As we know from the picture that we see in the back that uh, Krupal Dev wrote down, Srimad Rachandra Ji wrote down this Atma Siddhi for one and a half, one and a half hours time, 142 stanza. And uh, there is a uh, customary thing in the literature that uh, author always will describe about the uh, Manglacharan auspiciousness and what he's going to talk in this scripture. <clears throat> so, for example, um, uh, Samaisar has a first stanza, it just says what the author is going to talk about. Uh, same same thing here. There are two stanzas. So second stanza is part of the Mangalacharan also. And so what it is basically, if you are passing through the airport, you are early for the airport, and you are just uh, just loitering around, and you go to a bookstore and you see a book, and you open the book and you read the preface, first one page or whatever preface. Then you find it out whether this kind of a book will be good for me. Do I want to read it or it's okay that I can pass it away. Similarly here, this is kind of a preface. Couple of stanzas, one or two stanzas that author will write. They are basically preface telling us, yes, I would like to read this scripture or it's okay, I'll just say bypass, you know. So, Having said that, I'll bring the screen uh, 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 slides and then we'll start from wherever we are. <coughs> yes, slideshow. <coughs> so, Atma Siddhi stanza number two, that what we'll be starting. So first we'll be playing the stanza and we'll see what it is. <coughs> so it says over here translation wise for stanza translation the path of liberation has mostly disappeared at present. For its deliberation by the aspirant of self-realization, it has been started here explicitly. So this is a simple two stanza, two lines are there. 
So the liber path to liberation was almost absent. And now Simaji says, I am going to explicitly explain again. That's all it says. But the tremendous amount of meanings again in this stanza. Out of 142 stanza, there is not a single stanza you can say, eh, I can just bypass this stanza. No, each one has an amazing amount of meanings in those stanzas because he has an extraordinary capacity of expression of knowledge and simple two lines. Any, any normal average kid, small kid can also recite, but the meanings are a really, really great, great meaning. So in the present time, Vartman, present time that he's talking, so we'll be discussing what the present time means. Then other one is Vicharva, third one is Atmarthi, and a bhakya or so quite a few words are there that we'll be just expanding those words to understand better better understanding Srimadji what he was thinking when he's writing such type of things. Remember, he wrote down for an hour and a half, but the preparation for that thing was going on for several several births before. As we talked before, that he used to be in a samosaran of Mahavir Swami. So, when you are in a samosaran, when Tirthankar Bhagwan is there, when you have the supreme guru in front of you, then you learn a thing or two out of it. So, those are the things in his mind going on for lots and lots of births from before. And now it got fruition in this life in, in the forms of hour and a half writing that one. So it's an essence of his really whole existence that he's putting into these uh, uh, stanzas. <clears throat> so, Vartmana Karma Moksma Bahula Vicharat Martine Bhakyotra. Currently, the path of liberation has been mostly forsaken. It's presented here without any reservation for completion over by the truth seekers. So that's our stanza. So let's try to explain, uh, expand a little bit more. Invocation of blessing having, is, that's having good manners include. Invocation of blessings, there are certain manners are there. The unwritten rules are there in the scriptures. And then you're supposed to follow those rules. And that is the kind of etiquette for respecting previous acharyas and everything. So to do that invocation of blessing, there are four, five, six points are there. First one will be invocation of blessing by itself. Then second is instrumental cause, which who is the instrumental cause for me to write these scriptures. Third is resultant recipient, who is, the, who is responsible for its production, means for whom am I writing the scriptures? Then name of the scripture, number of stanzas that is there in the scripture, and who is the creator, who created the scripture. So these are the six points they are to, to be used collectively all, or maybe some points and other point could be hidden. So then that will become a complete uh, uh, preparation for writing a scripture and for the, the, the uh, so invocation of blessings at the beginning of the scripture for the completion of the scripture without any hurdle. Acharya Bhagwan and uh, uh, an uh, enlightened soul when they write the scriptures, they ask for invocation of blessing Mangalacharan so that without any hurdle the, exp the the written part of the scripture can be completed so that's kind of a, a good thought process that they have it when they are writing the scripture um, <clears throat> the uh, one second okay now the, the invocation of blessings can be given at the beginning of the scripture 
when meant for completion of the scripture without any hurdle. So he will write at the beginning of the scripture so that there are no hurdles. Sometimes invocation of blessing also comes in middle of the scripture. There are three or four or five chapters are there and Acharya Bhagavan may decide to write down invocation of blessing in the middle part also because the started work should not get lost. That's an expression of his uh, internal desire that uh, whatever I'm writing, make sure it does not get lost. Think about it, Kunkun Acharya Dev. 2000 years back, he wrote down the scripture when there was no paper and pen or anything. He was, well, he was moving around in the southern India, in the hilly areas, and there were the palm trees. And so palm leaves will fall down on the ground. So he will pick up those palm leaves and he will use the palm needle so keep the palm leaf on his hand and other hand with the palm needle he will he will write those scriptures fortunately with our luck those things are preserved and we have those things available to us so started work should not get lost that kind of a expression acharya bhagwan does that's called manglik coming in the middle invocation of blessing coming in the middle Sometimes at the end of the scripture also they write down invocation blessing and it's called wishing for the result of the scripture means I wrote down this scripture and hopefully the uh, people will read and they will understand, they will follow the path and they will get benefited. So these are the three different ways invocation blessings can be written. Here in this, in this one, First and second stanza, and we'll be talking second stanza right now. The both stanzas are meant for invocation of blessing, Mangalacharan at the beginning of the stanza, at the, at the beginning of the scripture. The end of the scripture, sometimes you, you, you already know this part. Every day you take care of these things. When you say Namo Loe Savasaunam, what does that mean? Namo Yantanam, Namo Siddhanam, Namo Aryanam, Namo Namo Loe Savas. Why do you have to make so long? Now I can't talk, even, I can't sing in a tune because now it just breaks, breaks away my tune. Why Acharya Bhagavan wrote down? Loe savva extra word in fifth uh, fifth stanza because that part written in the end of the fifth stanza in the fifth stanza it is applicable to all above parts also that means it can be said namo loe savva arihantanam that's what it meant namo loe savva siddhanam Namo loe savva ayaryanam, namo loe savva uvajayanam, namo loe savva saunam. That's the idea Acharya Bhagwan had it when he wrote down this way. But they also know not to waste extra spaces even for the literature part. And that's why that part loe savva was given only in the last part only. Now, further thinking about it, there was a one word which is a hidden, which is not been expressed. It's called trikal varti, and we'll see what it means. So that word is to be added in all the stanza means namo loe savva trikal varti ariyantanam. Namo loe savva trikal varti siddhanam. Namo loe savva trikal varti ayaryanam. Namo loe savva trikal varti ujjanam. Namo loe savva trikal varti saunam. That's what actually it means. Now, loe means in this universe. Savva means all. And trikal varti means all the three times, past, present, and future. So every Aryan Bhagwan of past, present, and future, I bow down to you. Every Siddha Bhagwan in this universe, past, present, and future, I bow down to you. 
every acharya every upadhyay every sadhu past present future in this universe i bow down to you past so aryan sid acharya upadhyay sadhu they are called panch parmeshti five supreme personalities so we know that so many five supreme personalities occurred in the past so is uh, rishabh dev to mahavir uh, that that type of 24 tirthankar and quite a few acharyas and everybody they obtain nirvana means liberation this life in this present time but what about future who will be the five supreme personalities well i don't know who it will be but one thing i know for sure i will be one of them i will be one of them that kind of confidence one has to have it because in future namo loye sarva trikal varti aryantam means i bow down to past present future aryan bhagwan so future aryan bhagwan is me that means i am expressing exuberating my my my, my uh, uh, enthusiasm that with proper guidance and proper personal effort i will obtain all those positions so that's so much for the invocation of blessings so when we come recite namoka mantra now in your in our mind it should go as this one namo loe sarva trikal varti aryantam like that yesterday i was taking class on uh, uh, samyak samyak gnan right knowledge and light and knowledge and the eight parts of eight uh, parts of this uh, samyak gnan and first part is called vyanjana char means to proper, proper pronunciation actual actual pronunciation ramo ara ara is not na prakrit ramo aryantanam so that's a pronunciation but second part of this right knowledge says that one should know the meaning of the stanza also so here now we know namo aryantanam means namo loe sarva trikal varti aryantanam means i bow down to all three of past present future aryan bhagwan present in this universe and future one i am myself so actually i am bowing down to my own eternal soul substance so that kind of idea has to be there simply reciting namo ka mantra is not going to do anything to you but now saying that hey i am part of i i'll be aryan sid acharya upadesh sadhu in the future means i will start my personal effort starting now so in near future i can obtain all those positions so that's called real recitation meaningful recitation otherwise cassette also says namoka mantra or if you have a parrot in your house parrot can also say namo yanta namo yanta means nothing one has to understand the deeper meaning of each and every stanza so here that's why here also we are dissecting every smallest part of this stanza so that we have better idea what simad ji wants to say somebody had told me that we, you are taking too much too long time explaining the stanza and everything hey listen you know this is this this scripture is not that easy that you just fly through you got to go snail pace and it will explain to me exactly what shrimad ji tries to teach me then my respect for him will be that much more anyway so let's go to the next one in this scripture invocation of blessing mangalacharan means author has bowed down to sri sadguru in the first stanza he says jesu rupa samaja vina pamyo dukha anand 
samajavyute pada namu sri sadguru bhagavan so i bow down to sri sadguru that's the first stanza and that means invocation of blessing he is he is showing his respect to his teachers his enlightened teachers that you are the one who taught me the pathway that's why i'm here so that's part of the blessing invocation blessing the first stanza now what's the purpose of this scripture that has been mentioned over here in this mention it says to establish the pathway for liberation then to think about pathway to liberation and to achieve the results vartmana karma moksha bahu lok the path to liberation is almost absent but i have realized that path and i am going to put forward in front of you exact way it is that's what simad ji is taking vow over here to show us the path to liberation he establishes that path to liberation as the stanzas keep going going further then he wants us to think about the pathway and not only thinking but acting on it to ultimately achieve liberation that's a purpose of this scripture it's not simply that is beautiful poetry and i listen i like the music and everything it's gujarati i don't understand so who says that you can't understand you have problem understanding gujarati i can understand that that's true it's okay you're born and brought up here okay but that doesn't mean you should not put the effort right now we are doing same thing in our language he put it in that 150 years back he put in a gujarati language because a majority of the speakers were gujarati all speakers were gujarati now we are you are born and brought up here no fault of your own that you don't understand you don't know gujarati if somebody tells you it's very easy to learn then on the same person i can say go and learn sanskrit too it's very easy to learn no 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 i cannot what do you mean by you no 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 back home when i go people say oh how come your kids and every year your grandkids are they cannot understand gujarati and they cannot read this book i said listen you know it is their mother tongue is english if you can read and write and fluency in sanskrit then those kids will be fluent in gujarati too so don't listen to those people right now you have things in front of you that say you have desire to learn you have inquisitiveness to learn believe me a door opens up automatically who knew that a corona virus will be occurring will be locked down in the house maybe somebody said okay let's start hindi atmasiddhi and then somebody said why not english also so as long as there is a interest is there things are available in along with you i also have a great time because now it forces me to read and think about it ponder on it and it just becomes wonderful thing so along with you i enjoy as much as you enjoy the word agopya bakyo atra agopya agopya means i'm sure i'm going to show the relationship with the previous learned saying means this pathway was open in the past in lineage of the acharyas in the from mahavir swami they knew this pathway but whatever reason the time time came such a way that people forgot the original meaning of it and now they started going on the rituals there was a story that one one lecturer one one priest lecturer wanted to give lecture on a religious item and before the lecture started he says we have to have a cat ha huh? are you going to give lecture why do you want to have cat well that's it cat has to be there 
prior to the lecture. Somebody asked me, what's the reason for the cat? I don't know, but it has to be there. So the inquisitive student like you, one of you probably went to his guru and said, hey, what is this cat business? I don't know, but has to have it. So he went to the, his guru and in, in the, he just went on again and again. Finally, the original guy he came to and he says, sir, what about what's, 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 what is so much about this cat during this lecture? So, oh my God, they still, still follow that one? Yeah, sir. Today, our the lecturer said that it has to a cat has to be there. Oh no. When I used to give lecture, there were lots of rats were around and they were bothering. So people were not able to listen carefully. So I asked them to bring a cat and when the cat was there, then all the rats ran away and everybody were able to listen Swadhyay very nicely. The, the lineage of the people, they forgot what's the reason. They just blindly followed rituals. Don't we do same thing today? Doing certain rituals, not knowing what it is? The other day somebody came to my place and said, uh, we would like to know about the Uva uh, Sagaram Stotra. We went through it. Complete stanza. First two stanza, it praises um, 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 Parsnath Bhagwan. And then it says, now because I'm praising you, my ills will go away. My health will become good. My sickness will go away. So just by just praising somebody, your sickness will go away? No. You have to understand the meaning of those things. If you don't understand and blindly do the rituals, it is no good. Okay, anyway. So here, now, when he says, here, this stanza here, let me just show that word here, then we can just go. Okay. Vartman Akalma. Vartman Akalma means uh, uh, currently, means present time. <clears throat> What is present time? What's a past time? What's a future time? So we'll just try to analyze this word present time, Vartman Akalma in this time period. What is this time period means? So let's try to understand that part a little, little deeper. That the time period is divided into six parts. And those who are the Pachala kids, those who have gone through Pachala, this is a very famous slide that you have seen it and uh, you already know about it. So some of the things I may go rapidly. So this is called descending time cycle. This is called ascending time cycle. This is happy, happy area. This is happy. This is happy, unhappy area. Unhappy, happy, unhappy, uh, unhappy, unhappy. So there is a decreasing amount of uh, 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 happiness and ultimately end up with the unhappy, intense unhappiness. Thereafter, again, uh, intense unhappiness and then slight unhappiness and unhappy, then happiness keeps on increasing. So this is called ascending time cycle. This is called descending time cycle. They both are divided into six parts. And from here to here, Starting from this guy all the way up to here. This is a half time cycle. In that half time cycle, fourth era, Tirthankars are born. Um, yeah, fourth era, Tirthankar is born. So uh, then we'll see what, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, again, same thing, when, when it goes on this side, ascending side time cycle, then on the fourth ara, again, this is sixth, fifth, fourth ara, the thinker gets born. This time cycle is consisting of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 14 sagropam years. In the past, we talked about sagropam years. 
we won't go in detail right now, but it's an amazing amount of huge, huge, huge time is called sagropom. And 10 to the power of 14 sagropom, that will be half time cycle. So these are the things that we are going to look. Sagropom means, as we said, that you know, four mile wide, four mile deep, four mile long, ditch, to, ditch, is, uh, uh, ditch is there and you fill it up with the newly born ship's hair and make it very, very small pieces that you can't make two pieces and it's put it, so it is tightly packed up so much that chariot of the king passes and it does not sink. Out of this pit, every hundred years take one hair out and complete ending of this pit is called one palyopam year. And 10 to the power of 14 Palyopam years is one Sagropam years. 10 to the power of 14 Sagropam years is one Kroda Krodi Sagropam years. And that 10 Kroda Krodi Sagropam years makes this half time cycle. So now it just tells you what is this time means. This is a macroscopic time we try to analyze. So here. First Sarah is extremely happy, same, same slide in the English basically, descending cycle, ascending, time, ascending cycle. Now, furthermore, same thing basically in a pictorial way, there's a first ara, happy, happy, uh, second ara, this is the first ara, this is second ara is a, a happy, third ara is happy and happy. Fourth is unhappy, happy. Fourth, uh, fifth is unhappy, and sixth is unhappy, unhappy. We are in this time cycle here, so we are in this unhappy part over here. And we will just see how many years each one takes. This guy, the first guy, it takes four croda crodi sagropom years. Four. This one. Is having a three crore crore sagro per year. This one is two. This one is one minus forty-two thousand. My handwritings are very horrible, so please bear with me. So one crore 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 sagro minus forty-two thousand years. This guy is twenty-one thousand years. This guy is twenty-one thousand years. Look at this picture over here. Happy, 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 and a little bit, and there's still some happiness. So most of the part that we exist is lots of happiness area. These are kind of some unhappiness, and this is much more unhappiness. 21,000 years out of this millions and millions and trillions and trillions of years. So our existence, we don't do that much sins. But remember, all those things are not important. I want to realize my soul because I don't want to keep on going in this cycle again and again and again and again forever. I want to get out of this cycle. Now, so again, same thing. Happiness, all the way to unhappiness. And we have this guy over here, sad face. Descending time cycle, ascending time cycle. Now, 10 Kroda Krodi Sagropam years, 10 to the power of 14 Sagropam years in this side. Same thing, 10 to the power of 14 Sagropam years on the ascending side. And total will be one complete cycle is 20 Kroda Krodi Sagropam. All this detail, why I'm giving you all this detail? Just to explain how long am I existing? This is only 20 Kroda Krodi, means one time cycle. How many such time cycle pass by? Infinite time cycle pass by. And infinite times infinite time cycle will come in the future. Now you can imagine how long am I existing. And with my mere existence so far, I have not done a right job, and that's why I'm transmigrating from one one gati to other gati and suffering and suffering. 
even when i go to he heavenly angels gati celestial realms of existence there is also unhappiness because they have jealousy they have greed and that's why they have unhappiness there also and naturally in the infernal life there is un unhappiness a plant life and animal life is un unhappiness human life we do see suffering in our, in front of our own eyes so every all four realms of existence they are suffering and i would like to go beyond and how can i do acharya bhagwan is explaining um he's he's explaining to us if we can take that message then we can be on the right path now again time what is time we just have to go define time a little bit more because this gives us opportunity to talk about time a little bit more in detail a substance is a substance because it's existing i am a soul substance this is the matter substance this guy is a matter substance my glasses are matter substance um, medium of motion is of uh, uh, there medium of rest is there uh, uh, the space is there and time is there and all six universal substances are present they are eternally present nobody created them nobody is going to destroy them they are simply there and those substances they are the six substances including a time substance time is a substance some of our one of the denominators of jainism does not believe time as a substance but time is a substance there are reasons we can discuss but that's not the, the uh, platform right now to discuss those kind of reasons anyway sub, sub, six substances are there so soul is there matter is there medium of motion means dharmastika is there medium of rest or dharmastika is there space means akash is there and time means kal is there all six substances are present in the universe out of which time substance is present now if you take the universe and let let's take this room for example take this room and divide it into further into two further into two keep doing keep doing keep doing keep doing keep doing keep doing till you come to a point in which you can't divide this place into two or two again tiniest particle is now there which is actually invisible by the eyes but tiniest particle that particle occupying a space is called one space point and the universe including 16 heavens on the top seven hells in the bottom and middle world where we are living all these places if we consider this space point then there are innumerable space point present in this uh, uh, cosmic universe now innumerable means the moon the saturn the sun system with nine planets jupiter all those things they are part of the universe all the distant uh, the, the the stars that you see they are the sun actually but so far away that we can just see the twinkling only we see the milky way milky way is a infinite sun systems in inside milky way all those area combined together in the lower part seven hell and top 16 heavens all those thing combined together and you continue the space point they are called innumerable space point now you can understand that space point means what how many space point innumerable means what number so that innumerable space point each space point has one time unit sitting on it so 
universe's innumerable space point each space point there is time means kal substance means kal dravya present and that's called absolute time now now the two space point we take it adjacent space point here and here a matter particle going out from this space point this space point and coming to this space point the going with the slowest possible speed what what time it takes that's called one samay why do you make us bored to death by all this useless information that's a question coming in the mind this samay is so important blink of an eye innumerable time units of samay pass by each samay there is a modification occurs in the soul between me as a soul with us us as a soul and aryan bhagwan and siddh bhagwan they are the pure soul we are impure souls what's the difference between aryan siddh bhagwan and us let's analyze aryan bhagwan is a soul as a substance which is pure i have a soul as a substance which is pure aryan bhagwan is a infinite attributes they are pure i have infinite attributes they are pure two out of two we are same as aryan and siddh bhagwan third one is a modification modes siddh bhagwan aryan bhagwan have a pure modes and i have only impure mode in that given samay remember that samay we say in the blink of an eye innumerable samay pass by that type of a one samay one modification occurs which is we impure for me and siddh bhagwan and aryan bhagwan is a pure so between uh, between us and the bhagwan only one samay is a distance difference if we clear this impure mode here and generate a pure mode we are aryan and siddh that's why in the puja we say nischit tere sadas prabhu arhant avastha paunga lord i am here to give you challenge that i will become like you i will remove my one one samay impure mode and i will have pure mode which will be same as you so that's important of samay that's the important time that we are talking about this is a substance that has mode in the form of now time is a substance and it has a mode like minutes hours sagropam paravartan etc etc and they are called conventional time this guy is called absolute time this guy is called conventional time but time is there present time jab aap shrimad ji says vartman akalma so now i have capacity to remove my ignorance and wrong ideas and create and produce clarity within my pure mode and i will be siddh bhagwan and aryan bhagwan no it's not asking too much it's possible i can give you one room darkest possible room which is a having darkness in that room since time infinite in the past and i put you in that room what can you do to get out of this darkness you said i will just light the light or i will strike the match from the match stick if match stick as soon as light comes up that darkness of infinite time disappears in one samay so this is i can do the same way my ignorance since time infinite 
not to worry my knowledge light of knowledge will remove the darkness instantaneously in fact i don't have to remove darkness i just have to put the light on that's it i don't touch darkness so this kind of thing you have to keep idea alive that i can make it i can make it i can make it i can make it don't have pessimism so what i'm ignorant from before so what actually i'm jealous about you young people at your age i was nothing you are far far ahead and if this is a situation that you are in gosh i don't know what's going to happen best is yet to come for jainism in this north america because of inquisitive students like you anyway so so much about time that we talked about let's go further and see what it shows now so first second and third ara this the six ara that we talked sixth time period we talked first second and third they are excellent medium and lower form of land of enjoyment they are called land of enjoyment means there is nothing but happiness everybody is happy there is no cunningness there is no deceitful nature there is no greed there is no anger they are innocent people it's called land of enjoyment bo bumi there is no religion going on here they just simply enjoy their life that's it as as matter enjoyment as it's a material enjoyment and there is a wish fulfilling tree called kalpa vruksha means you have a wish to eat wish to have a clothes wish to have ornaments wish to have whatever 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 you go to the tree and you get it isn't it good thing you just sit down do nothing and you get everything but remember that's a physical material enjoyment there is no spirituality here at all heavenly life to human life and vice versa continues in this first second and third uh, ara but in the fourth time period comes then tirthankars they come and when tirthankars are born all four realms of existence they open up as well as liberation means moksha moksha gati also opens up until here you are just going heaven to human to heaven to human over here now the pathway opens up that you want to do right thing you can go to moksha you want to do wrong thing you can go to hell also so those are the things we have to keep in mind the tirthankar comes and he is the one he is showing us the light those who follow that light they will be liberated those who don't follow they will remain in this trans migratory misery so six aras are we be already talk very good 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 bad bad good bad and very bad so then there are description of all those things which is you know we will just bypass this one we won't go in detail about these guys because uh, this is dukham kal which we are in fifth era we'll discuss little bit over here this ara is currently prevailing that means we are passing through this ara fifth ara fifth time part time part mahavi swami obtained nirvana and from the nirvana of mahavi swami onwards this fifth ara has started so that's where we are in it's going to last for 21000 years 2500 years pass by so much more time is remaining and uh, that's a fifth ara in this ara unhappiness which began little over 2500 years ago and will last for 21000 years that's we talk no one born no one born during this period will gain salvation in this in their present time so this fifth ara is such that one cannot obtain moksha 
then it's useless. Then why should I go to temple? Why should I take my Monday evening and sit down with you? Yes, there's no Monday even Monday evening football coming. That's why we are attending your class. But come fall and let the blah, 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 everything open up. Who cares about this class? Because there is no salvation in this life. There is no moksha in this life. So why should I spend my time? And well, son and daughter, you're misguided. Because liberation is not there, but some darshan can occur. Right faith can occur. Enlightenment can occur. And you can progress further. And within one, two, three life or whatever time, you in very short time, you will go to liberation. So don't put your guards down. You continue your activity, continue your spirituality, keep learning, learning, learning. Gurudev Sri Kanji Swami gave extreme importance to Swadhyay, self study. Because once you know something, once you know the nature of the soul and everything, now you can have faith on that one. Until now, my faith is to the alien objects of the universe, means I have faith on my body only. I am hungry. No, no, it's a body hungry. I am thirsty. It's a body is thirsty. I am suffering. It's a body is suffering. But me and body are same. That kind of wrong faith I have it. If I understand what's the right thing, what's the nature of the soul, and bring the faith to my eternal soul substance, that's called Samyak Darshan, and that means your path to liberation has started, and it will end in a complete liberation pretty soon, pretty short, within a short, short time. Because no one will observe two religion. So the salvation is not there, because this, that's why there is nobody is going to do the uh, uh, religious activity. It is said that by the end of this era, Jain religion will be lost. Fifth era, religion will be there. Sixth era, there is no religion. We have given a golden opportunity right now. We work at the right thing and we can achieve liberation. We can achieve self-realization. And so we have to have First, understanding, and once we have understanding, then uh, uh, Im implication of that understanding. How can I stay within? And that's what uh, 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 Atma Siddhi Sastra is going to tell us how to go within. What's the process of going within? Fifth time period is a fifth ara, which is having misery. Um, uh, human beings becomes selfish and is indulging in the infatuation to get knowledge of the soul is becoming difficult one is not able to see the path to liberation everywhere there is infatuation and illusion perceived means more maya is perceived everywhere mainly to get spiritual discourses discourses and experience in the soul substance becomes difficult swadhyay is difficult Sadguru is availability of Sadguru is difficult. To have inquisitive nature is difficult. The worldly objects are attracting me towards them. So I don't have time to reflect upon myself. Darkness of ignorance is prevalent. Living being fails to understand the extreme importance of religious discourses. Means, this is Patrang 291. Um, darkness of ignorance is there. Living being under the fail and extreme importance of religious dis discourses. Simaji wrote down letters. 150 years back, there was a darkness going on in the country as per the religion is concerned. People were just extremely uh, 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 ritualistic not knowing why that cat needs to be brought. Ritualistic, not knowing why I'm performing these rituals. So, Srimadji used to communicate with his disciples through the later writing. There was no uh, Google at the time. 
there was no internet at the time, there was no Wi-Fi, there were no bo I mean, minimal books were there, and people were main correspondence was not Gmail, main correspondence was through the letters, postage, post postal things. So he used to write letters, and after he's uh, passing away, uh, all the letters are collected, and the combination of the uh, combination of the letters are made in a scripture. It's called Srimad Rajchandravachnam rule. So if you just see this, this kind of thing will come a lot during our discussion. Patra 291 means that several several hundred uh, letters are there. And so we will just uh, put the references time to time what he says. To have desire for liberation, straightforward nature person, retirement from worldly affair, availability of a learned saint are almost impossible. Therefore, the learned saint has said this period, this period, time period called Punda or Sarpini, a period of downfall time in which extraordinary things happen. Now, Punda or Sarpini, let's talk a little bit over here. We are passing through this down, uh, uh, descending time cycle. The infinite descending time cycle passed by in the past. And sometimes, very occasionally, in some of the descending time cycle, there is some an anomaly occurs. Just like on every fourth year, you have the leap year, and your 29th February, one, one extra day. Similarly, there is also there is a, 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 some anomaly in a, one of the descending time cycle, and that's where we are passing through. And some of the things which are not supposed to happen, they have happened. We will talk that one as the time comes. Right now, I don't want to spend time because I want to finish certain slides so that we can be ready for next time. Due to non-availability of the religious discourses, means satsang. Presence of sinful association means a satsang. It's getting difficult to get path to liberation in this time period. So again, Srimadji says all these things that are why we are not able to get the liberation in this time period. Path to liberation is almost non-existence, moksha mark bahulo. Means he says liberation to the path to the liberation is almost non-existent because it is buried under this ritualistic society, not knowing what's a real thing. Srimadji also had a very short life, 34 years only. So he, he, did, he said, if I had longer life, at one place he had written, if I had longer life, I would have changed the face of Jainism completely and taken out all these ritualistic things away and give the real meaning to that. But alas, my short life is there. So I can't take care of, I can't do the reform. Gurudev Sri Kanji Swami thereafter came and he had a 91 year of life. And he worked single-handedly to tell people, to awaken the people, to come to the right path and do the rituals, nothing wrong doing rituals. But understand, understand. Upwas means not to eat. No. I'm not going to eat today and so whole day I keep on thinking about food. Oh my God, tomorrow morning, how can I, learn, how can I pass lunch, uh, lunch time without eating? How can I do this? How can I do this? Whole day I'm thinking about food. And that is not called Upwas. Upwas will be, you get engrossed within your soul substance. So much engrossment that you even forget to eat. That's a true form of Upwas. Do I understand that part? No. So Srimadji says, I don't have time to explain. I'll write down all these things. Maybe future generation will act on it. Thank God we have those things available to us. Even though it's almost non-existent, one can achieve it with the intense effort. Nothing is impossible, improbable, yes, but it's not impossible. I need to put lots of effort 
Number one, to understand the reality, to understand the hierarchy. Who am I? Who can I? Who am 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 I? Means bahu punya kera punja thi. That's where Srimad Ji writes that one. That who am I? Where do I come from? What's my true nature? And those are the things, if I put the effort to know myself, I can achieve enlightenment in this life. I know time is up. Just give me, finish, let me finish this slide, okay? Enlightened teachers without any prejudice opens up the knowledge regarding the path to liberation. Hey, I'm the enlightened teacher. That's what Srimadji says, that without any prejudice, I will put the path to liberation the way it is. How can we, how can you, uh, uh, we are extremely fortunate that he has shown the pathway to us. He has given the complete plate for us. We just have to start eating. That's it. So all these things are working in our favor. If we continue to take advantage of this time period, then we can excel, we can get enlightenment, and within no time we'll obtain a uh, liberation too. So these are the things. Um, sixth time is a very unhappy time. We are not going to talk about it because I don't know how to. I, I, we are not going to go there. So time is up right now. So what I'm going to do is, if you have question, that we can talk about it. So any questions so far? Because I, I'm only one minute past our time. Any question? Anybody there? Hello. Here. Yeah, you can just uh, uh, unmute and you can ask uh, if you have a question. Yeah. It by Sachin here. One question. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that uh, when we say uh, Namo Arihantanam, yeah. uh, Namo Siddhanam, and all the Panch Parmeshti when we bow down, we have to say trikalvarti yeah but but isn't like when, when we say namo arihantanam isn't by default it means that you are you are bowing down to all the arihantas uh, but all arihanta past present and future trikalvarti will be future future also the, the important thing such mm -hmm. that that uh, you know i'm saying namo arihantanam to mahaviswami uh, uh, murti but mm -hmm. in fact I am bowing down to my own true self. Good. And that's a form of point to be well taken, understood. That, you know, simply saying Namokar Mantra doesn't mean anything. But now saying that, hey, I'm bowing down to my own self because I am a, I am a future Aryan Siddha Acharya Upadhyaya and Sadhu. So that way, only thing, I have to just open up that power which is within me. I have a million dollar vault in my hair, in my house. I just have to open that vault. Somebody was said that, hey, you know what? I mean, this is a story. That, uh, I mean, uh, under, under your house, there is a, 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 a huge treasure chest. And so they started digging and digging and digging and digging. And then he says, ah, there's nothing happens. So they ran away. And then thought, the next guy came and he just started digging a little bit more and all that treasure was there. So that yeah, treasure is here. I just have to say, I have to remind myself that, hey, this is my treasure. Let me go within and that will be true Namokar Mantra. Right. So that kind of thing that we have to create that attitude. That means, that, that's why I said that recitation of the sutra is very important but meaning behind that is very important you know that i mean this is no 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 criticism to anything but when i was a small kid and uh, i was uh, 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 i was uh, uh, i was when where, where i was living there were all um, kids were there and pratikaman comes and everything so you had to go to pratikaman and i had a dreadful idea that that 40 logos coming in sambatsari day my god it may take forever that was my scar in my brain 
So what I will do, I will start reciting that logos from morning onwards and start putting in the, my bank. And so when, when they say, okay, now 40 logos cows check to be done, and I will take it out those logos from my bank after one or two, I will start fooling around and whatever, not knowing why we are doing that one. And when you understand the meaning of those things, it makes a big, big, big difference. So understanding, deep understanding, that's why, as I said, we can finish this atmosphere in two hours and three hours and whatever, but that's not the intent. Intent is we want to learn. It doesn't make difference how long it takes, but whatever I know, it has to be really, really well understood. Then it just makes one summary. Remember, Aryan Bhagwan, Siddha Bhagwan, and me, there is difference of one summary. And I can make that push provided I have proper knowledge. That's what it is, right? Any other questions? Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, then we'll just do the closing, okay? <clears throat> Jis rupa samajamina pamyo dukha anan samajamyo te padanamu sri sada guru bhagavan parama puras prabhu sada guru parama jnana sukhada jene apyu banani tene sada pranam Dehachata jeni dasha varte dehati Tegnani na charama o vandana agani Jamani ke gyan se suja lokalo Sovani mastatanamo sadage to hudu Jai Jinendra Jai Jinendra Thank you. 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 Thank you.